previously on Mowers and Blowers. And you know, those uh, big trucks that... <laughs> I mean, we... They would be able to... Um... Or <laughs> front... Hey! I... Good morning. Got my Verizon uh, installation. I'm upgrading my internet. <laughs> About time. This is my buddy Mitch, and he's brought over, that's right, what we've all been waiting for is the bed to this two by six desert UTV project. And that looks pretty long, doesn't it? That's what she said. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Just hold the tongue. Hold the tongue? Well, you hold your tongue, young man. <laughs> Look at this. He's got a hydraulic lift. Oh, I, would, I was gonna expect like the sound. Oh, that's when I go up. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I like to hear that. I wanna work smarter in my partner. Bro, I think that this is gonna be short enough that I can put the whole darn bed on there. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. It'll stick out a little bit. It'll stick out a little bit. But it's short enough. But it's short enough, it's yeah. It's not real long, well I shouldn't say real long, but some of the normal ones are like out of here. I just don't think I'm going to be able to keep the dumping feature. Yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? Because it pivots. It pivots on the, on the bottom, doesn't it? Right there above yeah. the axle. Okay, so if you do that, yeah. So it pivots on the axle, which means this would be way too high for me to... You know what I'm saying? You would need a pivot point on the, on the tractor for, for it to go like that. Back over the tires. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could get it to work, but I mean, honestly, I'm not going to be... I'm not going to be dumping motion here and driving it around and then having to dump it, you know what I mean? It'd be so, nice. it'd be nice, but... It'd be a nice feature, like the... You know. Yes, but that's more fabrication for me. <laughs> it does. We shall see, man. It's all rusted out. The guy I got it from mm -hmm. kept it in his garage all the time. Oh, really? He took the old bottom mower from me. In your between your knees. Oh, that's old. But it looked like new. Did it? It was unbelievable. He bought it new and took really good care of it. Extremely nice. Yeah, see, so the pivot is here at the wheel axles. Yeah, and, so and the, the so yeah, and you need that height to yeah. be able to get that dumpability, but right. if you're gonna set this up on your on the top of your bed mm -hmm. and it clears your back of your mower. Oh, right here, I see what you're saying. Maybe you could you could In other words, right here. If I would get this to be at the end of my deck, uh, of the rear, it would work. Ooh, maybe you got something there. But this is, it just creates this height, mm -hmm. so it has the ability to dump. Well, I mean... Because if it was down on the ground, it wouldn't dump. You see what I mean? Actually, bro, this could really work out perfectly, because this is curved exactly the same rear curvature of that. So if I could bolt this whole panel to the back of that, the tilting and the dumping feature would still work. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna mock it up, you know. But that my middle name is Mock. You're you're very smart. That that definitely might work because the distance between here and here looks like it's about where the seat is. Yeah. All you need is for this pivot point right here equal to that axle. Yep. This and needs to be off of the, yeah. the back behind. You know, this was the rear tire. It could still do the same thing with that. Oh, you know what? And that and and this this is movable too. Yeah, you could unbolt that rest. Yeah, not all rusty and. Well, we got lots of possibilities here. Lots of possibilities. Looking, I even threw a couple extra parts. I saw that there are some spark plugs in there. Mm -hmm. That case is running low on spark. That looks like it's not going to clear. I don't know. You think that's going to clear? That might clear. That don't work, I'll always wish it did. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Mitch? Think it'll clear the cars? I have no, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Oh, it's close. Painting a car is very expensive. About $500 a panel. All right. Four years ago, maybe. Drive this. Is this an AMG? 
Uh, no. But I do drive it though. My daughter used to drive this to school. It has AMG assist, um, sports package, but that's it. It's not an AMG. Not the AMG engine? Uh, no, I don't think so. Screamers, aren't they? Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry and Mowers and Blowers. Welcome to another episode on my secret project. It's no longer secret. You guys know what it is. So right now I'm just buttoning it up. As you guys saw uh, yesterday, my friend Mitch came over and from a trade, I gave him a John Deere seat that he needed. And he gave me one of his many trailers that he has in his backyard. <laughs> He's got a lot of stuff. I might be going to him for parts in the future. Uh, if you guys are Long Island and you need parts or tractors and stuff, the guy's got like a hundred of them in his backyard. It's insane. Uh, anyway, so uh, this looks like it's gonna work really well. Um, eventually, I'm gonna have to think about whether or not I'm gonna be able to utilize the dump feature of that trailer, you know. But the pivot point is at the wheel axles. So being that that's there, I might have to do some fabrication. I, ideally, I'd like to use the entire thing without having to cut it to size, but I'm afraid that if I put it on the tractor, right, it's gonna stick out a lot on the rear, which I guess it's okay. We'll see what happens. But first today, uh, I wanna take off some parts that are underneath the uh, tractor, such as the hangers for the uh, mower deck. We're not gonna have a mower deck on it, so I wanna keep the hangers to sell on eBay. Uh, I've already sold the hangers on the uh, gray one. People want those LT1000, 2000 parts so that they can fix their tractor. Since I'm not going to use them, it just adds weight to it. So um, there's also a, a really good pulley under there. You guys know I need pulleys for my future applications. I was walking Boba the other day and I saw in somebody's trash. Um... Initially, I didn't know what it was, <laughs> but I thought it would make a good, like, brush guard for the front. You know what I'm saying? Doesn't, isn't this, like, perfect? You put it on, and these are, like, the guards for the headlights, you know, on, like, Humvees and stuff. So, I mean, I just took it. Uh, turns out that this is a chin-up bar, you know, like a gym. You put this on the door frame, whatever, and you can do pull-ups and stuff. And also, you use it to do um, push-ups. <laughs> Let's see. Ooh, yeah. Oh. oh. Anyway, so I'm just going to take some parts out of this thing first. Well, something as easy as taking off the two hangers is a lot more difficult when you have the engine mounted. <laughs> it's a lot easier if you didn't have the engine on there. So um, it was like hiding in different places. You had to finagle your hands in there like an octopus to try to grab onto that R clip, you know. Finally, I did get the hangers off. But the very simple idler pulley that I wanted, I wanted to keep it. And the reason why this tractor, I found out, why it kind of slips and it doesn't really grip on very well to move. As you see, when I get out of the garage, I've got this hump right at the door of the garage, and that's to keep water out of the garage. But to get over that hump, once that first set of wheels touch it, the driving wheels are moving and spinning. That's why I have to give it a push for this to grip onto that bump so that I can get traction and go. And then I realized down there that the belt is actually a little loose, so I could see a little bit of slippage. It's on the bottom pulley, so there's no idler or tensioner pulley that I could get on there to make it tighter. The only way I could get it to be really tight is if I got a bigger pulley. <laughs> the, the John Deere ones are a bigger uh, bottom pulley, so that will probably make a difference. Uh, right now, when you're trying to take the idler pulley off, you turn the nut, and on top, there's another nut that spins with it, and it's like hidden underneath the sector gear of the steering column. So, I mean, it's it's a pain in the ass, but I'm telling you, I'm determined. I hate it when I try to do something easy and I can't get it out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna exhaust all means. 
some people would usually just say, oh, screw it, I'm not doing it. But look, I got this wrench. <laughs> I wanna try to get you guys to see this. So it's hiding right underneath that sector gear. I'm trying to focus here, there you go. There's a nut right there underneath that thing. And I got it through this area here. So it's holding onto that nut. Hopefully now I'll be able to extract that pulley. That's right, I go through all kinds of things just to allow you guys to see what I'm doing. I'm actually looking at the camera to do this. <laughs> Why isn't that grouping on there? That should have done it. Unless I did a slippage. Crap, there's a slip. I should be able to do it. to me that's right fellas perseverance determination motivation i'm not gonna let a simple idler pulley beat me <laughs> so uh, in case you guys want to know in the future it's a uh, 14 millimeter fits that nut really well and of course there's no use on having these guides over here doing nothing so might as well take them off because it just adds weight <laughs> Come on, it can't be a nut in there too. No. It's a carriage bolt. Carriage bolts have the little square imprint in the back. Now you got a carriage bolt to keep for something else in the future. Decrease weight. Keep a keeper. <laughs> Keep a keeper. <laughs> you see what I did there? <laughs> uh. And of course, there's another keeper in the bottom there where the idler pulley went on to. It's holding at the same uh, hole. So this was just hanging there. Just tilt it, slide it out. about fitment on the trailer. So how's this gonna work? One tire's good, one tire's bad. It doesn't matter because we're not gonna need the tire. So this trailer has the dump feature, okay? When you in disengage this lever here, it disconnects from the latch and this dumps, which is a pretty cool feature. Not that I would ever use it because I never get mulch and put it in there and then have to dump it or sand or anything like that or topsoil, nothing. So I could just make it easy and just put it on there. <laughs> just drill four holes and secure it on there with bolts and that's it. I'd be done, right? But the engineer in me always thinks of, well... It's designed to have, it's designed to um, have a dump feature. Why don't I try to use it, right? That's my thought process. So since the pivoting is here, right on this axle, right? And if you look at the way this is shaped, it's kind of curved down, which would match perfectly <laughs> with my turned down fender. You mount the pivot, the axle, here. So that when you disconnect the latch, it'll dump like that. But then obviously that thing would hit the ground and all that stuff. Uh, and also I think this thing would be too long. 
The only way I could try to figure this out is to unbolt that bottom wheel just so we have the dump trailer, the, the bed, and put it on there and see. Um, I guess I could do that. So let's see what it looks like on the bottom. It looks like actually it's pretty easy to just disassemble. Bolts over here and this this part with the wheels will come right off. Maybe I could mount the axle here so that it would just dump that one. Well, you know what? We gotta take this off anyway, just so I can see how everything, would, whether or not I'd have to cut the bed short or something. It was pretty easy to unload the bolts. We fought a lot of them. As long as you have an impact, it's very easy. They're all over the place. works this is how it dumps so the pivot point is right at the at the wheel axle now let's just see how much this would stick out the back whether or not I'd have to cut this I don't I don't want it it's a perfectly good bed why should I cut it right but I have to see this tailgate actually swings out from the bottom Up, which I don't really want. You know, I want to be able to like put stuff in without this in the way. I don't want it to look that way, so I might not use this out. I mean, I'll, I could put hinges on it, you know, so that it swings downward like that. Definitely put hinges on it. All right, let's see how it sits on the uh, tractor. All right. So the great thing about why I do this channel is that whatever I'm doing or thinking in my mind, I want you guys to see it too. So you guys are looking at this just as, just as, um, just when I'm looking at it. Gives you the mindset of where, where my head's at, what I'm thinking. Of. So obviously the seat comes down like that and I could move it forward a little, but this is where I'm kind of comfortable. You couldn't move it forward that much anyway, maybe an inch, you know? So no matter what, I think this has to be like that. Because I want it to cover this, the gap. Otherwise, I'd have to find a way to make something to cover that. Also, I had an idea that if this was too long, I could stretch this all the way over here and cut this open so that the seat would be able to sit in there. <laughs> I know, that's, that's a lot. But it might work. So that would be great. Wouldn't that be great? That'd be great. Oh, okay. Pull this It's okay. That would be fine. It doesn't look like I'm going to have to cut it. But then, seat. Push it back so the seat can sit there. this lip over here that gets in the way of this seat being able to be pulled up. Cut the lip, it would be all right. I kind of want it to cover the gap so it's less work for me.
I'm gonna think about this. I'm gonna sit here and look at it. So you see what I did? Um, when I put the bed on there, right? It was kind of drooping on the bottom. Uh, in the back, it was kind of drooping down. So to, because this uh, thing is curved, see? So when it gets to that area, it starts to droop. So I decided to add this chin-up bar that I found on the street, and it adds that one inch to the end. And what it turned out to look like was that when the bed was on there, these look like rear bumpers, you know, with a little step. Of course, I'm not gonna step on it, <laughs> but it looks like it's a step. And also rear bumpers. And it makes it look like, uh, you know, industrial, militarized at least. And also it, it adds to the uh, height of the rear so that the bed doesn't droop down. So I think I don't wanna cut the uh, bed to to give it the, um, because now I'm extending it a little, you know what I'm saying? Uh, at least it, it won't look like there's a big ledge sticking out like that. At least there's something filling it with the bumper. Uh, so I think I'm going to mount it, the whole thing on there. I'm not gonna cut the bed. I'm gonna put the, the bed on here and I'm gonna put it forward and then it's gonna hit. So I'm gonna cut, you know what? I'm just gonna tell you, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna show you. I thought this was going to be light. It's not. <laughs> Why couldn't I get Mitch to give me a plastic one? The steel is better, I know. So, wow, look at that. That looks great. Um, I think I might have to put it on the back. That looks, that looks pretty good. So that doesn't look like it's sticking out too much in the back, you know. That's pretty good. Like, you know, four or five inches sticking out from out the bumper, but that's that's kind of normal, you know. Uh, I, cut, I just wanted to cover the gap. I didn't want to have to do any more sheet, well, uh, sheet cutting and then welding to fill a gap. You figure you're going to cover it with this thing anyway. I think this is good. Uh, how I'm gonna deal with the seat? <laughs> You're gonna laugh. So to just get the seat to fit, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna cut all the way down like that, cut all the way down like that, and push this in a little bit to give clearance to the seat. If I gotta cut this piece off, I'm gonna cut the piece off. Okay, just to get the, the seat to fit. Because it doesn't matter what goes over here, you know? The whole point is, you want a bed that's useful so you can put shit in. Just cutting this piece here like that and having it bent in. Maybe I'll fill it or something or something else, a panel over here so that it kind of accommodates the seat, if you will. So it just protrudes inside a little bit. That's the easiest way I know how to do it because I don't wanna, I don't wanna have to cut this part off, you know? Well, what if I moved it all the way back and you don't have to do that? If I did that, you could see a gap there and that makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> it, would, it would accommodate the seat, no problem, right? Like that. There's a gap here and the gap bothers me. And also if it's like that, I would feel like this the thing- back would be sticking out too much. There's too much space back there. Wouldn't you agree? It's sticking out too much. It doesn't look right. So, I think I'm gonna pull this forward, cover the gap, and then do what I said. Cut just this, and have it protrude outwards a little to accommodate the seat back. So 
the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get four bolts mounted on here. here so solid I'll show you so I drilled holes all the way through all the way through all the way through and I used large washers to uh, you know keep it pushed down well and I pushed it so hard and it's on there so tight that it started to buckle and bend a little that's okay I'd rather have it tight you know what I mean you can't tell about anything from the outside so it has good clearance on the rear, especially with that <laughs> makeshift bumper that I have. That actually looks pretty cool, you know? I don't know if I would actually use this to step. I don't think it would work, but it's badass. Looks like a truck, you know what I mean? What do you guys think? That thing couldn't have come in handier than, than it did. That looks great. As you can see, nice and flat on there. Of course, I can't put my seat down because it blocks it. Like I said, I'm gonna cut right here, and right there, all the way down, maybe halfway, right, halfway, then bend it to accommodate the seat. Uh, I'll see what I do if I wanna cut the whole panel off or not, you know what I mean? So basically, half of me is gonna be in the bed. Well, when I'm in the bed, I can go take a nap. So what do you think, huh? It looks really good. I had to put the hood back on. It flew off before. It's easy to come off when you put it sideways. Uh, wow, <laughs> pretty cool, huh? <laughs> I never thought I'd get to this area, but uh, that, that turned out great. Yes, I don't have the dumping feature, but I don't really want to go through the uh, engineering of, of doing that. You know, I just want to, I just want this to have a bed. That's it. I don't. I don't need it to dump or anything like that. I'm probably not going to use this for anything. You know what I mean? But it's pretty cool. And this is this is the most fabrication I've ever done to a tractor. You know, and uh, uh, it's been fun. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Um, next episode, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. You know, we're gonna cut that opening there. And I'm gonna try to get the tailgate to have a hinge so that it swings outwards. You know. And then, you know, we could, I'll find a fig, I'll figure out a way to, you know, uh, attach the um, tailgate to the back. And instead of it swinging outwards like that, I want to have it swing down like uh, most tailgates do. So that'll be kind of tricky. I'd have to go look for some door hinges, or whatever, but you know, that, that's interesting too. So my friend Andy from Jericho. You remember on the first project, he actually is very good with graphics. So he has one of those uh, vinyl die cut machines at home. So he's gonna make me some stencils, uh, you know, mowers and blower stickers, uh, American flag, that kind of thing. So instead of me going through those painstaking days where I would <laughs> put the stencil on, do an M, do an O, do a W, do an E, you know, go through all that and spray each individual letter on both sides. I have to do this with my finger, hold it, spray it, <laughs> wait for it to sort of dry, because when you put this on to match it up, do it again, you keep doing that. So the whole words, mowers and blowers. It'd be a lot, you know what I mean? <laughs> and on the other side too. So that's a lot. I better get cracking then, huh?
gonna just make me a sticker and I'll stick it on and be done, you know? So he's doing that for me. I've ordered some paint, so we're gonna paint all this. Uh, either desert sand with maybe a little bit of uh, off-colored camouflage to it, maybe. I don't know, I'll see how it goes. But the main part of this, man, is, is us getting this bed done today. Uh, what do you guys think? Leave it in the comments if you like it or not. It looks pretty cool, no? Looks kind of like one of those uh, John Deere gators. Hope you guys are enjoying this project because I sure am having fun making it. Uh, we've come a long way, guys. As you know, this was one tractor and then two tractors and then the engine that I got, right, that I repaired. So everything so far is free! 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 To have it all put together with these parts from different uh, tractors like the fender, the bull bar, uh, the John Deere front wheels, which are eight inch front wheels, by the way, uh, us uh, scavenging some of the parts on the bottom because I didn't want to leave it there and not use them or sell them. Um, yes, the transmission slips a little because the belt's a little loose. And of course, that engine is still kind of leaking oil here and there. Not bad, but not good either. <laughs> uh, welding the sides here to, you know, fill the gap. Uh, having the four wheels in the back. Ideally, I would have liked to, liked to make it four wheel drive, but that that there's a it's a lot more involved when it comes to you know adding another pulley, finding the right belt, getting the linkage to go from that uh, shifter to that one exactly, so that you know when you're pushing the shifter, it's in the same gear, you know, front and back. So I was really involved in it, you know what I'm saying? So I, I didn't want to do it. I, I figured if if I can't have six by, can't, if I can't say six by six, it's no fun saying two by four, you know what I mean? So now it's just two by six or just call it a six wheeler. Uh, finding stuff just when I needed it. Um, I think that, I think that rear bumper looking thing is pretty cool. It serves its purpose big time because it makes it look more industrial. It acts as a bumper and a possible step, and it raised the rear by an inch, which is what I needed to um, to fill the droop of the rear fender, you know? So, I mean, it just came in perfectly. I mean, it was like me walking the dog and going, wow, I could sure use that for the project, you know? And it, it just came just like that. And uh, also thanks to my friend Mitch, who gave me a great trade, I mean, Essentially, that, that's free because I, I gave him one of my seats. You know what I'm saying? So we traded. I didn't spend any money. The only money I have in here right now is the battery that I bought last year. $25. That's it. I don't have any other money in here. This is completely free other than the battery. And, of course, I did go buy paint. And there's something else that I have a, a surprise about. Uh, what did the first Desert Sand Tractor Project have that this doesn't have? Something that I made. That's right, babies. Gatling gun. Pick the flag out. And I got a little hole over here. And the lights go on, right? Wild, huh? That was pretty cool, but it took me a long time to make it, so I don't think I want to make it. I could try to make it really good, but uh, I figured I'd just buy it. <laughs> uh, so I have that on the way, and that'll go on at the very last uh, episode when we have this all painted and stuff. Eventually, I'm going to have to clean the wheels and wipe this all down a little bit for the paint to stick. You know what I mean? It's pretty dirty. Uh, but you don't want it to look too perfect because it's a desert sand UTV. It's supposed to be used in the desert in the mil for the military and it's supposed to be banged up and all that stuff. So painting it is not going to be too big of a deal. Most of it's going to be camouflage anyway. So it minimizes the amount of masking that I have to do. And uh, if there's a little dirt, I'm not going to power wash it. I'm not going to scrape it. I'm not going to grind it and sand the whole thing. Believe me, I'm not. Um, I'm just going to put paint over it. <laughs> if it sticks, great. If it doesn't stick, I don't care. But the, it sh the wheels have to be the same color as that, so masking it's going to be a pain in my arse. Um, I know there's the index card trick, but you have to deflate everything. These tires suck anyway. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to get anything in there, you know? 
So I might have to do some taping around it or something like that, or make like a round template and just spray through it. Oh, we'll see. But uh, like I said, a multi-episode series, fellas, and I hope you're enjoying it because I sure am having a good time making it because it's so cool that, to, you know, for the ideas to come in your head and, you know, at night you're lying down, you go, oh, should I do this? Should I do that? What can I get to this? You know, you know, I do that. I don't know. Do you guys do that? Leave in the comments if you guys think about that stuff too. But uh, this has turned out really well. Stay tuned for the next episode, fellas. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Next time on Mowers and Blowers.